Hey, what's up, guys? It's me once again, and welcome to another DVD update. And I got in these DVDs over the last few weeks, and some of, half of them are pretty much from online, and two I actually bought. So I want to start off with the first one, and I know you. Before I get into, I just want to say this. I know I like Eddie Murphy's earlier work, like the 48 hour movies, uh, Beverly Hills Cop, and Trading Places, you know his early stuff before he went to the whole fat suit thing, but sue me, I actually do like this movie, so, because I actually grew up on the movie, so, yeah, I, I, it's the Nutty Professor, <laughs> I will admit, I do like this movie, I do actually think it's funny, it just has its quirky moments, I guess, it's, plus, it just, it just has a. I actually made a reference to this movie when I was talking to my friend, but my friend never actually seen the movie, which is like, what? Nah, it's understandable. Not everyone's gonna see this. Well, everyone did. And I know some people that were fan of Eddie Murphy's early work probably hated it. And I know there's some people on here that probably are like, oh, Eddie, Eddie Murphy and the Nutty Professor. Nah. Well, I actually do like the movie. I like the Nutty Professor. I know there's some people on here that are probably like, okay, I will admit I do like it. But I'm not going to lie, it's, I just say it's probably one of in my, I don't know how to explain it, but I do like the movie though, so I'm not going to lie and say, uh, it's okay, but I actually do like the movie. <laughs> and there's some moments in the movie that just do crack me up, but I'm not going to lie to myself. Like I said, I grew up with the movie when I was younger, so I had fun with it. And uh, shoot, I don't know what else to say about it. And oh, before I mention it, I got this off Amazon, and I forgot how much it cost, but I didn't pay too much for it, so that was good. Now the next one, before I get into this one, I can explain this one. Y'all probably gonna say wait a minute did you talk about this in your video for pointless sequels yes I know I kinda was being harsh on this movie and I did a video about it called pointless sequels which I'll continue doing but I did say in the video on the first ep first series of pointless sequels that I don't hate the movie it just seems kinda pointless making a sequel with this movie the this movie and that is the Night Professor 2 The Clumps. Yes, I know I said some pretty rough things about it. I mean, I don't hate the movie. So I will admit I do like this one, but not as much as the first film. I like this a little bit more than this one. This one has its moments, though. It's just when I first saw it when I was young, I'm like, eh, not as good as I remember when I was, not as good as the first one. I mean, it has its, like I said, it has its moments, but, but I still go by what I said in the Pointless Sequels video, like how they had to, how, where the hell was Miss Purdy, and where did the Janet Jackson character come from? Like, I know I pretty much, that, that's all I repeated basically in the Pointless Sequels, but I couldn't think of anything else. But there was just so much in this one, I will admit, it was like, unnecessarily needed. But then again, it, 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 I will admit, it is pretty funny though. I mean, like I said, not as funny as the first film, and not as good. But I will admit, I do like it, and I just decided to get it, like, yeah, what the, what the fuck. It's a good, I will admit, in a way, it is a good time waster, so I'm not going to bullshit either. And I, like I said, I did kind of was being kind of harsh, the way I was saying it in the tone of voice in the, that video. So, yeah. So, even I will admit, I, I, I also kind of like that one, too. But like I said, no, we're better than the first. Now I got this off Amazon Toon. And the movie is Candyman. A really good horror film. I seen the second and third one. They were okay. Third one is, uh, that's when it was at the point. It was like, okay, this is getting stale, the story. Pretty much, uh, for those who have never seen the sequels, I'm only going to tell them this once, and I'm going to only tell them this one time only. If you've seen this one, 
you pretty much seen the other two. Because the second and third are the same fucking movie. I mean, Favorite of the Flesh was okay. And Day of the Dead was, eh. That's when I just started to get really a little ridiculous and started to slack a bit. Because to me, at that point, it was starting to get repetitive. I mean, I like the first film. And Tony Todd does a creepy job with his performance. It's just... And, oh yeah, and the music is... Right, before I continue... It's by Philip Glass. And yeah, everyone should know who he is. Yeah, I mean... I like this movie, and the sequels I wouldn't bother putting in my collection, honestly. The first one is the real classic movie, and like I said before, it was pointless making it. I will admit, the making a part two and three, you could have just come up with something more inventive if you were going to do a Candyman movie. I mean, as the series went on, it could the trilogy, they, they should have just made them, they should have done a little bit more with part two and three, but that's just my opinion. Plus, I felt like the other t this, the two sequels were the same bullshit. Same fucking shit you seen in the first film. I mean, I know we see in other horror films, they do the same. I mean, literally, the storyline, catching a white girl. Has this already been done before? It's like, nothing new comes out of it. That's probably why they didn't make up any of the sequels, because they couldn't think of anything else. Now, what happened at the end of this movie, even though it ends pretty ho-hum, but the end where Helen... After she was ki after she died from being burned in the fire, that should have been a spin-off sequel. Helen or something like that. That could have been a pretty decent sequel, probably. Could have been called Helen's Revenge, or Candy Woman. Actually, who knows? Like, I don't know. That's just me, though. That the second film should have been a little. Since the way it ended, it should have been a sequel with Helen, but that's just, like I said, it's my opinion. So, don't shoot the person with the opinions, it's just what I think. The next one is Rumble in the Bronx, a fun Jackie Chan film. This is what got him into the States, because this was mostly where he got big in the States, was the, this movie. He's done movies before this, like, along with... Legend of Ma Drunken Master, which came out a year before this, which is also a pretty good film. You should check that out. And Drunken Master, which I have not seen the original, but I did see it in Kmart a few times, and I thought about getting it, but I never got around to it. I might buy it sometime. Plus, I like Jackie Chan, so what the hell. And plus, it's a fun film, like I said. It's a good time waster. And plus, I, I like Jackie Chan once again, like I said. And it just... It, but that's all I gotta say. Now, this one is a remake. I know we all bitch about remakes and all that crazy shit, but... There's some remakes, and I didn't say all remakes were bad. Hell, I got the Dawn of the Dead remake. And the original. I like both Dawn of the Deads. So I'm not gonna shit on myself and say, Okay, I hate the remake, I like the original. I like them both equally on their own level. This one I do, however, I do like the original of this one, but I think this is a little, little bit better, at least to me. Not because of the period piece. I love the 70s. I wish I was around the 70s, but that's not because of the time period. It's just the the story itself and how it ended. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, it, and that's the Pelham 123 remake. I actually do really like this. This was a really good movie, and I do enjoy Denzel Washington as an actor and all that. John Travolta plays a pretty good villain, and <laughs> he sure says f the f word a lot in this movie. He every word out of his mouth is fuck. Literally, it is fuck, fuck, fuck. Please suck on a duck. Well, he doesn't say that. But I'm just saying, he just says fuck a lot in this movie. <laughs> That's fine, but I will admit that does get kind of repetitive after a while. That could have just toned down a little. But then again, who am I to say anything? <laughs> but like I said, I do like you like this remake a little better, and I like what they did with this. Because I, I like how they brought a little more connection to Denzel and Travolta's character. Because in the original Walter Matthau and, uh, and the other guy, they connected, but not like 
they did with this movie, not like what they did with Travolta and Denzel Washington. This, I thought they did good together. And if you have, I'm not gonna say much about this because I want some of those who haven't seen this to check this out. It's really good for a remake because at least it has some qualities to it that is actually watchable. And plus, you got Tony Stark, uh, Sky's director, so fucking a. And the last one is Tales from the Hood. It's pretty much Tales from the Dark Side or Tales from the Hood, Tales from the Crypt, but takes place in the hood basically. And if you haven't seen this one, I uh, you just YouTube it. You'll get the the stories. It's not the whole movie that was YouTube, just the stories. But those are good. And I, it's just. A, you know, this movie, I think, was it says HBO Home Video, so it must have been an HBO movie, but hey, hell, it's a pretty good movie.